guys, welcome to the first episode after the elections. Eh? We had been silent during the elections period because uh, it seems that it had been like Kenya was like a maternity ward. Dr. Yanakuja, anapima centimeters, anasema bado. <laughs> so anyway, we are back here with content. At least now the distraction is not as much and we can continue serving you a dose of Canvasitamo from the Canvasologist himself, Eric Okabi, Eric with a CK. And today we are talking about a very controversial topic, a topic that has been on the headlines in the motor world for a very long time, especially in Kenya. We are talking about why uh, diesel cars or rather passenger cars are really not ideal for our Kenyan and African conditions. And as usual, Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. Follow us and uh, share your feedback, Conversations on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also... Follow me at a personal level, Eric Okabi, Eric with a CK on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, let's start having the diesel discussion. I know, whenever we talk about diesel, uh, Mazda owners feel attacked, especially guys who own Mazda Demio, Mazda Tenza, and the Mazda CX-5, uh, all diesel variants. Eh? And it is true, diesel engines on these cars have been failing because apparently they are the most on our roads in the passenger car category however we also have some entrants uh, we have like the toyota vensis uh, diesel we have the hyundai's the hyundai santa fe uh, we also have the Q kia sorentos that are diesel as well and they have not had a very good track record however let's talk about the things that are actually making these cars fail now away from uh, the mazda head gasket issue uh, let's discuss about some other causes that may cause these diesel engines in modern passenger cars to fail yeah and uh, it i would like you guys to grab your notebooks and your pens because it might be a bit intricate uh, explaining this uh, but i'll try to make it as simple and as palatable as possible now when it comes to additives in fuel there is something that is called sulfur most of you might remember sulfur from your chemistry lessons which are not very interesting however i'm going to try to make this one very interesting eh? now sulfur is mostly found in diesel well it can be found in petrol as well but i'm still going to try and uh, we are relating this to diesel because diesels are the ones that are mostly affected now sulfur is a very good uh, lubricant for fuel pumps but um, in a diesel engine we know it it works under the principle of uh, ignition by compression so what sulfur does it is good as a lubricant but it is not good in other areas for instance during the power stroke uh, some fuel some diesel does seep in into the uh, through the piston rings and gets to the engine oil now what does sulfur do sulfur when sulfur reacts to the engine oil it disintegrates the you know the the, the lubricant qualities of uh, engine oil making it less efficient as a lubricant so this raises the friction and uh, you know what this does it might uh, drastically reduce your engine life and uh, now also increased friction increased wear increased heat sometimes this can even lead to overheating now now that you're talking about sulfur and the level of sulfur in diesel remember we are a third world country and uh, through this point i'm going to introduce a few terms eh? for instance the level of sulfur in diesel is measured in something we call ppm that is parts per million now in japan where in the uk where most of the cars that we get here are imported from they are they are capped at euro six yeah euro six corresponds with uh, a diesel that is rated at 10 ppm or less actually below 10 ppm now kenya being a third world country most of the fuel most of the diesel that comes into the kenyan market space right now is capped in at uh, above actually between 15 ppm all the way to 50 ppm this uh, you know where do you get this uh, information from now according to the unep world fuel map at as per 2017, Bugwa will put that map here and will focus on Kenya. Uh, UNEP classifies our fuel to be at between 15 ppm to 50 ppm. Now remember, Euro 6 is below 10 ppm. So now what happens? Uh, the more the sulfur 
then the more damage it's going to do to your engine. Now from Euro 6, remember these are the, the engines that produce as little soot as possible. And the more sulfur you have in diesel, the more soot you're going to have. And this brings another angle uh, on this conversation and that is DPF regeneration. Now first of all, what is DPF regeneration? Now DPF regeneration is uh, the process through which uh, the soot that accumulates on the diesel particulate filter is burned or converted into ash by increasing temperatures in the exhaust system. Now how does DPF regeneration occur? Now DPF regeneration can occur automatically when you're driving your car at highway speeds uh, between uh, basically over 100 kilometers per hour and uh, the ECU monitors now I'm getting technical eh? the ECU monitors uh, how much suit you have clogged in the DPF by measuring the exhaust pressure now if the exhaust pressure grows higher uh, the ECU injects a little more fuel uh, to try and heat up the exhaust system so that it burns the excess suit on the DPF so I hope and that is how DPF regeneration occurs well if you don't if you own a diesel car uh, let me use Mazda. If you own a diesel Mazda Tenza or a Mazda CX-5 and you just use it for town, maybe sometimes DPF regeneration might not occur. However, you can do that DPF regeneration through the use of uh, a, a diagnostics tool that is specialized for, for some of these things. However, now when DPF regeneration occurs, you find white smoke coming from the exhaust. Most of you might uh, mistake this for turbo failure or uh, excessive oil seeping through the piston rings. However, that's not the case. That is simply DPF regeneration. Now, back to the basics. Eh? Now, the more the more the sulfur in fuel, then the faster the clogging of the DPF. So your DPFs in Kenya will probably clog in faster than they would in Japan. And uh, now regeneration, DPF regeneration has to occur again and again and again. However, if you read and you do extensive research, you will learn that most of the time, if you happen to manually regenerate the DPF, uh, the most manufacturers recommend that you change the oil immediately after that because there is a lot of uh, sulfur that gets into the engine oil, making it less efficient as a lubricant. Even when DPF regeneration occurs, you know, more frequently, automatically through driving through highway speeds and uh, the ECU raising exhaust temperatures by fuel injection, uh, well, you will still have to change uh, the oil faster. That is why most of the times in diesel engines, service intervals are not, uh, are not as wide as those ones in petrol engines. Now, when our sulfur-rich diesel is injected for DPF regeneration to occur, it means that your engine is still, your engine oil is still going to get disintegrated faster. Now, most technicians in the Kenyan market space today are giving uh, DPF delete as a solution to this problem. However, this, this will solve the DPF clogging issue, but it will not solve the issue of, uh, uh, you know, sulfur-rich diesel seeping into the engine oil uh, through the piston rings. It's, it's a form of uh, blow uh, bypass. You know, the, a little fuel will always you know, bypass or uh, go through the piston rings. Just as sometimes you'll have oil, uh, you'll have blow-by of oil through the turbo. So it also happens that some diesel might seep in through the piston rings. Now, DPF regeneration will sort that clogging part, but it will not solve the primary problem, meaning that you will have a diesel engine in a car in Kenya. Remember, diesel engines are designed to last very long. However, in Kenya or in Africa, these diesel engines might not last as long. Remember, these are Euro 6 engines whose diesel, whose diesel is supposed to be capped at below 10 parts per million of sulfur, uh, getting fuel that is around 50 parts per million or even the, the cleanest being 15 parts per million. So meaning there'll be excessive sulfur, so uh, the sulfur that gets into the engine oil will be way more. So that will greatly reduce your engine life because there'll be more friction because sulfur makes, uh, you know, oil disintegrate and making it inefficient as, uh, as you know, as a lubricant. Now, most manufacturers, I was reading uh, something on the interwebs and uh, somebody raised that, 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 that aspect of bringing uh, one of the trucks, an Iveco, to Africa. And you know what the manufacturer advises is if you're bringing that Euro 6 engine to Africa, well, uh, what do you do? 
you, you there is no fix what you can do is get an engine that can tolerate high sulfur levels and this brings the in the question what about the prados that are being sold locally prados uh, you know uh, land cruiser 300 series 200 series uh, and also trucks you know all these pickups like the Isuzu D-Max, Toyota Hilux. Now most of these cars are, are rated below Euro 4. Yeah, Euro 4 can tolerate around 50 ppm and above uh, around there. But remember, some of these in you know companies like Isuzu East Africa are actually producing trucks that are Euro 2. Yeah, that's in the public domain. If you go through their brochures, you'll find that their emission levels are at Euro 2. So those ones can withstand high sulfur content in diesel and that is why you will find that mo most of these pickups and most of these uh, trucks sold locally will survive and they will even outlive their expectations but when you import a passenger car like a Mazda Atenza from uh, from the from Japan whereby and it's a Euro 6 rated engine it might not last as long so DPF delete might solve part of the problem but it will not solve the entire problem that is why whenever you call us I always tell you in Kenya if you're thinking of buying a car please a passenger car say Mazda Demi or Mazda Atenza it's powerful it's very economical uh, however it might not last that long because of the quality of our fuel. So uh, I remember there was that story of uh, head gasket overheating. Now away from those, our and also people will say our fuel is dirty because of the nozzles and all that. Kenyan fuel has with time become a bit clean, but remember we are st we still have a lot of sulfur on our diesel and that is why most diesel passenger cars advanced modern diesel passenger cars will continue to fail prematurely because of the sulfur content in our fuel sawa sawa i hope you guys have understood and this has been an insightful and alluring episode and i hope you share your sentiments about this video on our comment section uh, also on our youtube on our also on our social media channels, uh, conversations on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also follow me at a personal level and tell me what you think about this topic. Eric Okabi, Eric with a CKI on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.